source coming from writings of Narada. Now, one would be justified in calling the Buddha a pessimist if he had merely emphasized the truth of suffering without suggesting the means to end the suffering and even gain eternal happiness. The Buddha perceived the universality of sorrow and he prescribed a remedy for this universal sickness of humanity. The highest conceivable happiness, according to the Buddha, is Nibbana, which is the total extinction of suffering. But one should beware of this pessimism, because in the suttas themselves, the Buddha tells us that his teaching was a gradual teaching, a gradual pro practice, and a gradual progress. Progress, in the Buddha's eyes, was the gradual relief of suffering in day-to-day -day affairs of the human beings. Now, the Buddha does not expect his followers to be constantly brooding on the ills of life and so make their lives unhappy. Joy or pity has to be cultivated by every Buddhist as one of the essentials or prerequisites of enlightenment. In the opinion of many unbiased writings, Buddhists are reputed to be the happiest people in the world. They have no inferiority complex. They are wretched sinners. Oh, happy indeed, happy indeed, we shall be living in joy. These are some of the oft-repeated favorite sayings of his followers. So make no lamentation or the past, and yearn not after that which is not come yet. By what should you maintain yourselves? Hence it comes that you should look serene of you. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.